guys, welcome back to CVO Wellness. My name's Allie and today I'm going to be talking about how to not avoid conflict. So coming from a previous people pleaser and someone who avoided conflict like the plague, this has taken me a few years to, you know, slowly work through and get over and, and I'm not the best when it comes to conflict now, but I definitely feel more comfortable addressing conflict and having conflict in my life and withstanding conflict. So if you're someone who feels like you avoid saying how you feel because you don't want to get in disagreements. Um, when someone comes to you with conflict, you want to avoid it or you get really upset or you go into like over apologizing right away to get rid of the conflict. You feel like you can't ever speak your piece. So if someone upsets you, you know, you stay silent maybe and you start to form resentment. These are all things that I used to do um, and they're not the healthiest or the most helpful techniques to dealing with conflict. So today I'm going to be talking about some tips and tricks that helped me with dealing with conflict and hopefully they can help you as well. So starting off is just acknowledging that conflict is a natural and normal part of every relationship and it's something that's going to show up regardless. So that is something I had to really work on, especially because I grew up in a household where Conflict was not necessarily avoided, but it wasn't really addressed. So, you know, if someone was upset with someone, it was more a silent treatment or, you know, don't feel that way or a little bit pushed under the rug and forgotten about. And then like within time, you know, the family came back together and after someone got angry and just had alone time, everything was almost like settled without actually needing to address what happened and apologize for it, which isn't always the best way to deal with conflict because then resentment can form and also too like you're not really setting boundaries with people and learning how to overcome conflict so you reduce the amount of conflict you have in the future. I just said conflict so many times there. Anyways, so yeah, the first step is just acknowledging it. So if you feel like, you know, someone comes to you and has a conflict with you or you have a conflict with someone, the first thing I kind of say to myself is like, oh, this is a natural, normal response. You know, conflict happens. I'm upset with this person and usually you get upset with people that you care about or when you're in a situation that you care about. So kind of rewire your brain and reframe the thought to be like, okay, this is showing up for me because I deeply care about this thing. If I didn't care about this situation, I wouldn't probably be thinking about this and I wouldn't give it any time or attention. So the fact that this is bothering me means that this is someone who I love, this is someone who I care about, and this is something that's important to me. And so I need to address this. So once you've acknowledged, okay, conflict has arisen here, or if someone's come to you with conflict and you say to them like, okay, thank you so much for you know trusting me enough to come here and explain this to me because it's showing me that you care about our relationship and I want to make this better, create a safe space. So, you know, if you're feeling super tense, you can say to someone like, Hey, I really appreciate you bringing this up for me. I'm feeling a little bit off guard here um, or taken aback here. Do you mind just giving me 20 minutes or can we, you know, grab a coffee and talk about this tomorrow? I just need a little bit of time to like soak on it, reflect on it. Or if you're addressing someone because you have conflicts and sending a text saying, Hey, um, I was wondering if we could grab a coffee tomorrow. I kind of wanted to chat with you about the situation because it's bothering me and I don't want it to affect our relationship negatively. So just setting up a time and a space where conflict can be addressed, where you're not stressed out, you know, you can put your full attention into it. The other person has the time and energy to put into it. I think setting the space for it is really important because it's saying like, okay, I'm going to address this here and this has the time, space and calm energy to work through this conflict. Whereas if you know, you're in the middle of a fight or tensions are high or you're catching someone off guard or they're catching you off guard, you can go into like a reaction mode and it can feel really unsafe and you might say things you don't mean or you might shut down. So just setting up like a time and space where you can actually talk about it in a civilized manner is important. All right, so once we've set up the safe space, again, we wanna to say to the person, okay, like I'm coming to you with this conflict because I, I care about our relationship and I love you and I want to work through this because I don't want this to affect us and I don't want to hold any resentment towards you. And if a person's coming to you, you know, acknowledging that's why they're coming to you. So setting the stage of like, I wanna work through this, not like attacking at them or vice versa. I think that oftentimes, like as soon as you know, you say to someone like, hey, I'm trying to work through this with you. It creates more of like a team mentality versus like an, a me versus you. Then, of course, use your I feel statements. So saying to someone, okay, like I feel, you know, hurt. Um, I feel like this is how the situation went down. And explain how you feel, stating it's just a feeling, not a fact. And then end it with like, 
can you explain to me what your experience of the situation was for you um, and walk me through like maybe whether there was a disconnect here or what's happened and then you kind of give that person an opportunity to reflect and be like oh like I didn't see it from your perspective and maybe they'll notice something new and be like yeah you know what I shouldn't have done that and I'm really sorry and like that was my bad or they could say like hey like this is what I was actually going through here and it gives you an opportunity to see their perspective but now seeing it from yours I realize like that was not the case and I'm so sorry about that or however the conflict's going to be resolved but at least you're coming at it from like a non-attacky way and you're just simply saying like this was my experience this is how I felt can you tell me your experience and how you felt so we can kind of figure out like where the miscommunication was then I think it's important for the person who has expressed the conflict issue to state like how they want to move forward so once you've heard both people's sides if you can clearly state to the person who's upset you like okay like going forward I really need you to do this or like I really feel like I need you to apologize for this or I feel like I need you to change this behavior um, stating to them like what you actually need so it's clearly defined and then also that's a great time to set a boundary so you can say like if you do this again I will do this right so boundaries aren't if you do this again like you're a bad person or da 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 it's just I'm gonna do something differently so if you show up at my house and you wear your shoes in the house all day long I will no longer be inviting you to my house or I will be asking you to remove your shoes before you walk in the house. That's silly, but it's showing that like you're in control of the conflict. So, you know, you've expressed the concern, you've given the other person the time to reply back to it, and then you've clearly stated what you want going forward and the boundary that you're going to set if that doesn't happen to protect your peace. Now, that person can take or leave it, right? It depends on how much they care about the relationship. It depends on, you know, does that boundary work for them? That's their own issue to deal with. That has nothing to do with you. What you're doing here though is protecting your peace, not being a people pleaser, stating your ground, and saying clearly to this person what you need in order to make your relationship healthy, happy, and not full of resentment, right? So this is actually saying to the person like, hey, I want you to come over. I want you to be in my home. I want to spend time with you. I want to you know, dive deeper into this relationship, but I can't do that peacefully if you're wearing your shoes around my house. So I need you to take your shoes off. And if you can't take your shoes off, then I can't host you here anymore. And I think that's a really like fair and kind way to go about it because again, you're just simply stating what you need to make your relationship better and you're saying why and you're saying why you feel that way and then you're setting a clear boundary of what's going to happen if the person doesn't abide by it. And so the person knows, okay, in order to make Allie feel more comfortable and spend time with her in her home, I just need to take my shoes off. And if they care about you enough, I'm sure they'll be willing to do that, right? So it's more of like a, a team mindset and again, not being like, you're so rude, I can't believe you would walk in my house with shoes on and creating judgment and labeling that person as something that they maybe are not. They could just be like, oh, like I grew up where shoes were allowed in households and I had no idea. And like, you could be like, wow, I didn't even take their perspective that that was just a normal thing for them. And so that probably was their default. It's really about like, removing the tension and trying to meet in the middle and like dropping the ego and dropping our guards and just being honest and vulnerable and authentic with someone and like paving out the path forward so the last and final step is after you pave out the path forward and you say okay this is what i need holding the person accountable so you know checking in you know if someone comes in with their shoes on you know you can say hey remember what we talked about and they're like oh i'm so sorry take the shoes off right away and you can move forward but you know holding true and checking in on your values sometimes people are, are going to just start conflict with us and they're never going to stop and it's just always going to be that way and that's when you have to decide okay is this person bringing peace and you know joy into my life or are they causing me more stress and tension and then you can make other decisions about the relationship going forward but never do that without actively like diving into the conflict first and giving that person the benefit of the doubt because if we don't give our friends and family and loved ones the benefit of the doubt we're just going to become closed off um, and harbor resentment and become people pleasers or have no boundaries and that's not how we want to live our lives so again conflict is normal conflict is natural and remember if a person who you cared about had a conflict with you you would want to trust that person enough to address it with you and give you the opportunity to like you know learn and change and evolve and apologize or explain yourself so give the people in your life the same grace and choose to go through the mud and work it out with them because trust me relationships that are built on authentic vulnerable and honest connections are the best kinds of relationships
All right, so I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe as well. Share it with another friend if you think it'll be helpful for them as that really helps this channel. Thank you so much and we'll see you for another video soon.